Today we celebrate the solemnity of the baptism of the Lord. And we are still celebrating Christmas. And it's very interesting to, to understand that, in my opinion. Uh, the baptism of the Lord is right at the end of the infancy narratives of Jesus Christ, which means Christmas. And next Sunday we are going to celebrate the we are going to celebrate not the first, but we are going to continue celebrating celebrating the ordinary time. The baptism of the Lord is just in the middle between Christmas and ordinary time. And <clears throat> is the fulfillment you want of Christmas time and the beginning of ordinary time. Now there is a question, and I want just to answer that question reading something that Pope Benedict wrote in his book, Jesus of Nazareth. I don't know if you have ever asked that question. Why Jesus Christ <coughs> went to be baptized by John the Baptist? Remember, the Gospel says that John the Baptist was baptizing a baptism of repentance. Do you remember that? It's in the gospel. Uh, the gasp, the gospel said that John was preaching <coughs> conversion and he was baptizing a baptism of repentance of sins. So the question is why Jesus Christ went to receive that baptism if he didn't, didn't need any repentance because he didn't have any sin. And I said I'm going to read the explanation of Benedict XVI, <laughs> Pope Benedict. And after that I'm going to start uh, preaching about actually the baptism and the, the sacrament that we have in the Catholic Church. Jesus, this is Pope, Pope Benedict. Jesus lowered the burden of all humanity's guilt upon his shoulders. He bore it down into the, into the depths of the Jordan. He inaugurated his public activity by stepping into the place of sinners. His inaugural gesture is an anticipation of the cross. What he is saying, even if he didn't need any repentance, he just went to the Jordan to associate, if you want, to be humble and associate with each one of us sinners. And Pope is saying that there is an inaugural gesture that anticipates the cross. On the cross, Jesus Christ took the sin of all humanity and he redeemed us. So there is something similar when he went to the Jordan to receive the baptism. He is taking the sins of each one of us and he is redeeming us. So we have the same meaning in the baptism of Jesus Christ and on the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay, this is the explanation. I thought it was important for us to understand that. And Pope Benedict explains that in a beautiful way. Now, today is a very important day to meditate about our own baptism. What, me what <coughs> means to be baptized? And Again, I'm going to read another explanation. People explain that better than me. So it's in the Bible. St. Paul, in the book, in the letter of, to the Romans, chapter 6, explains what, what is the meaning of baptism. What, mean, what means to be baptized? We almost, we all almost here, are, we are baptized. We have some people who, at the, uh, after the creed, are going to be um, presented, if you want, to the Catholic Church, those who are going to receive uh, some sacraments uh, the day of the Easter Vigil. I want to know how many of them are going to be baptized, sister? Four? So these four people are going to be baptized at the Easter Vigil, and for them, it's very important to understand what St. Paul says, and not only for them, for each one of us who, who are baptized. In chapter 6, 
verse 3, you can read that. And I invite each one of you to go and read that and meditate about the meaning of our baptism. Are you unaware that we who, are, who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. So St. Paul is saying two things. In baptism, each one of us were baptized into the death of Jesus Christ. Let us say that in another word. In baptism, we went to the tomb with Jesus Christ in a spiritual way. We went to the tomb. But because we went to the tomb in baptism, we were raised to a new life, the resurrection. This is what St. Paul says, which means we are grafted on, immersed in the life and the death of Jesus Christ, to be able to raise like Jesus Christ. That's the theological meaning of baptism. So that why, that's why St. Paul says that he doesn't live anymore, that is Jesus Christ the one who lives in him. Our life doesn't belong to us. It belongs to Jesus Christ right now. Where, because we were baptized in the life and the death of Jesus Christ. And you're going to say, so, and what? It sounds beautiful, what? Let me give you three implications of that, okay? Three. The first one. You say, what? The first one. We all are members of the same, as St. Paul says, mystical body. We are immersed in Jesus Christ. So we are interconnected, if you want. Now I cannot say, and I hope you are not going to say, there is a Christian a Catholic suffering, it's not my problem. Let me tell you something, it is my problem. If the mind says there is a heart problem, the mind says it's not my problem, I think the mind is going to say, oh, it's my problem. If the heart doesn't work one day, the mind is not going to work. What is the name of this finger? How do you call this finger? Pinky, pinky. The pinky cannot say, there is a heart problem. Pinky, it's not my problem. <laughs> if there is a heart problem, the pinky are going to, and to work, you know what I mean? It cannot work. We are interconnected because we belong to the same body since the day of our baptism. Let me tell you something, that's very important. Many people, many Catholic and baptized people don't think about that too much. We live, and I'm so sorry to say that to you here in the United States, but here in this country, don't get me wrong, we have many beautiful things about that. We are very individualistic society. We have that problem to connect with others. Baptism is teaching us and telling us you are not an isolated people. You are interconnected in a spiritual way. Somebody is suffering there, I am suffering here. You, suf you suffer is my suffering. I mean, we suffer together and we have to be aware of that. We cannot live a life of isolation, if you want. That's the first implication. I'm saying that, but St. Paul says that. St. Paul says that, again, in a beautiful way, better than me. We are members of the mystical body. This is what, that's what St. Paul says. We are like a body, okay? Now, the second implication. If 
we are interconnected. Ah, before I say that, that's why, and I want to invite you before I go to the second implication. Do you know the corporal works of mercy? Do you know them? Go online, it's free, Google, and you can see them. It makes perfect sense. If we are interconnected, the person who is sick is my problem. So I invited to visit them, those who are sick. This one of the corporal works of mercy. Whoever is in prison, that's my problem too. It's like sometimes we live like it's not my problem. That's my problem too. That's another corporal works of mercy to visit those who are in prison. There are people who are thirsty. That's another one. That's my problem too. What I am doing for those people. There are people who are hungry. What I am doing about that. That's another one. Now you don't have to go to Google. I'm telling you the corporal works of mercy. So go ahead and see. And that makes perfect sense because we are interconnected. I cannot live like nothing is happening to me if somebody is hungry. I cannot live that nothing is happening to me if somebody is thirsty. I cannot live like nothing is happening to me if somebody is suffering of any sickness. I have to do something. We are interconnected. Now, the second implication, and that's, that's a beautiful one. If we are immersed in the life of Jesus Christ, how do we start Mass today? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. When we pray, we pray in Jesus Christ. That's very important to understand. We are not praying like, I am here, and God is there. We are praying in Jesus Christ. He knows us. He knows what we have. He knows what we brought today to Mass, because we are in his life, we are together immersed in the life of Jesus Christ. And by, in the day of, the, of our baptism, this life began. And like any life, what do we need to be alive? We need to eat, we need to feed that life. The spiritual life is the same thing. We need to feed that life, every single for us, excuse me, Sunday, coming to Mass. So there is a spiritual life that needs to be fed. That's the second implication. And we pray with Jesus Christ, immersed in Jesus Christ. Okay? And the last one, because it's, I don't want to be too long today. The last one. And it's beautiful too. We are celebrating the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God, the 20th Christmas day I was preaching at 11 a.m., that very sad day. God, the Son, became one of us. He took flesh in Jesus Christ. That was, this is what we celebrate during Christmas time. But let me tell you something. Today we have to celebrate if you want a second incarnation. God, Jesus Christ, is incarnated in the Catholic Church. Remember, we are his body, so he is living in us. You got it? So now, some people say, when something happens, praying to God in a beautiful way, actually, too. I'm going to do the gesture. God, why do you allow that to happen? Why you are not doing anything? Now, let me pull the, how do you say that, to turn, turn to you. If we are the body, the question is not why Jesus Christ is like he is there, it's what we are doing. Remember, we are the body of Jesus Christ. What am I doing in that precise mo moment? 
to change that. How I am acting. We are the mind, we are the heart, we are the hands, legs of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ gives us gifts to be able to do something and transform our society. So the question is that, what are you doing? Look, is what we are doing. Jesus Christ is here, a li life in our midst. We are the church, we are the body of Jesus Christ. It's through him that Jesus Christ makes any transformation. And I think that's very important to understand. And that means that we have a mission. Every single one of us have a mission. Which one? I don't know. We have to find out that mission. Now you can say, or you may think, what I am going to do to transform the society? I don't have the power. Maybe we are not going to be able to do it, but if we together, we all together, do something to change it, that is going to make a huge difference. And that means to be a baptized Christian and Catholic. So let us pray today that we may be able to uh, live our baptismal promises every single day. First, understand that we are interconnected. I don't want to listen anymore that if somebody is suffering, that's not my problem. His problem is not my problem. No, it's our problem because we are interconnected. Second, let us understand that since the day of our baptism, we began a spiritual life, a life that comes from Jesus Christ, a divine life, and we need to feed that life, especially with the Eucharist. And third, let us understand that being the body of Jesus Christ means that we have a mission to transform our society. We have to do something. It's our mission. We are the mind, the heart, the hands, and the legs of Jesus Christ to go and do something for our brothers and sisters. Please stand. <clears throat>